Okay, in this tutorial we're going to talk about the underpainting, the auto painting, and the restoration mode of Corel Painter. Um, to get to these functions, you just need to go to Window to show underpainting, and that basically brings up all of these options for you. And I'm just working with an image that I got off the internet, a, a tiger here. Um, first of all, underpainting is exactly what it means. It's just like some basic filters that you can slap on an image for, for a nice underpainting. Um, for the most part, I don't really use many of these functions because they're very kind of Photoshop-ish and very kind of stripped down Photoshop-ish. If you if you don't really get into, you know, adjusting these functions of a, of a these elements of, a, of an image, I would probably just go ahead and pull it into to Photoshop. But there are some interesting aspects about it. Um, first of all, it has these already, uh, in a way, kind of filters that you can slap on your image um, that kind of pump up uh, the color a little bit, like the, uh, the Impressionist scheme, the uh, uh, Classical scheme, the Modern scheme. We have watercolor and sketchbook and chalk drawing. Um, the one that I think is probably one of the nicest ones, my personal opinion, is the uh, the Impressionist scheme because it kind of pumps up the colors a little bit and I'd kind of like to do that for this image. Um, in terms of um, the f uh, brightness, contrast, hue, all that kind of stuff, um, you can go here and just do like a big, like desaturate it if you want to or darken it, lower value contrast, whatever. I'm just going to press none. And if you wanted to be really specific about it, you can play around with these functions. The smart blur is probably the one function that I like that um, I'm sure you can do in Photoshop, but you may kind of struggle to do it. You may have to do various filters. Um, you can basically pull it up here and it'll simplify the image a lot, um, but you won't lose your edge quality. So right off the bat, you can really make it look like a painting very quickly. And I'm going to pull it up uh, to 75%. And then with the edge effect, you can put uh, kind of, you know, basically, you can alter the, the edges of the picture, which, you know, can be a little bit corny if you ask me. But uh, you may want to do that. I'll go ahead and do the, uh, the jagged vignette. And then I'm going to go ahead and just press apply. And then what you're going to want to do is basically make a quick clone out of this. And obviously you can go over here to file and make the quick clone, but it's already kind of set up for you here. So I'll go ahead and press quick clone and zoom in on my image. And you have the option of having the tracing paper off or on. You can go to preferences and kind of set that if you want to. Um, otherwise, I think it always kind of turns on automatically. So you can kind of turn that off and on if you want to. Um, the next thing that we have at our disposal is the auto painting, and this is, I think, the really uh, one of the funner things about Corel Painter function that I don't believe um, Photoshop has. Um, basically, what you want to go ahead and do is, uh, you can see the smart stroke painting, go ahead and click that. I'd also go ahead and just click a smart settings because it's going to make it easier for you. And go up to your brushes. Pull it up here and go all the way to Smart Stroke Brushes. And then you have a whole bunch of brushes that you can choose from. And I'm gonna go ahead and just choose the top one here, Acrylics uh, Captured Bristol. And what we can do here is just go ahead and press the play button and it basically automatically uh, paints on top of the image for you. And in the beginning, these uh, strokes are are very large, just like they would normally be when you're when you're painting uh, traditional painting. You know, starting off with big shapes first, and I can go ahead and stop it in between. And I can turn this off and on just to kind of see what's going on. And for the rest of it, I'll just go ahead and leave it off so you can kind of see how it basically works. And for the sake of the demo, I'm just going to kind of speed through this really quick. It just starts off with uh, you know very big shapes and then gradually works its way to smaller and smaller shapes. And you can, as I showed you before, you can stop this at any point if you want to. And you can kind of turn this off and on to kind of see what the original image was. And I'll just go ahead and let this play out. And you can see at this stage you're really finally starting to see the image that you started off with and the brush strokes are gradually getting smaller. And once it gets towards the end, it's a little bit difficult to tell whether it's still painting on top of it because the brush strokes really start to get really small. All you have to do is just look at this little 
section right here, and if you have the, uh, the stop button here, the red button, obviously it's, uh, it's still thinking. Then you've got this little blue and white symbol here that's uh, saying that it's still thinking. And you can stop it at any point. Um, that's what's nice about it. You can stop it when it's really loose if you want to. And I'm going to go ahead and stop it here because this is the look that I would like. I really don't want it to get any tighter than uh, than it is right now. Um, but if you wanted to get it tighter, you just go ahead and let it go. Um, it does take a long time to, uh, to totally process. So I'm just going to go ahead and press the, uh, the stop button here and you can kind of see the uh, difference between you know, what I started off with and what I have now. And the last function is the uh, restoration. Um, basically, if you get to a point where you just think you got way too lost, you have an area um, that you would really like to kind of pull out some of that detail, like let's say you know you, you felt like the face got a little bit lost, what you want to do is just go ahead to, uh, I would go ahead and pick the, uh, the Soft Edge uh, cloner. Uh, click on that and this automatically switches over to the cloner, uh, the Soft cloner. And then you can go over, and I'm going to go ahead and kind of decrease the brush size here. Uh, a little too much. And I'm just going to kind of like lightly pat on top of it. And this will bring back my underpainting. And maybe I want a little bit here. Get the things in the, uh, the foreground, like these limbs, to be maybe a little more detailed. And if you want to do some actual painting right on top of this image uh, without using the, uh, the auto cloning, um, just go ahead and uh, you know go to some of the other brushes that we have in, uh, in the cloners. Um, earlier we were on the, uh, the soft cloner. You can go ahead and oh, go to wet oils cloner and paint away on top of this image. or any of the other various brushes that are that are available here. Like the smeary flat cleaner. If we really want to get very kind of painterly with it, if you don't think it's painterly enough, it's totally cool. And if you feel like you've lost it again, which it looks like I'm getting kind of close to, um, you just want to go back to the soft cloner and kind of pull back that image, and if you think it's a little bit too heavy-handed, you can always go back to opacity with a soft cloner, pull it down a whole bunch, and it'll gradually kind of bring that back. It won't be nearly as heavy-handed. So that's it for the underpainting, the auto-painting, and the restoration.